lazy to five mistakes that you want to avoid if you want to lose body fat over the age of 35. And some of these are gonna be pretty shocking because they were shocking to me as I was doing this research. You ready? Let's get into it. When I hit my mid thirties, I gained over 50 pounds in probably about a year. It's like I couldn't get my hormones together. It felt like the harder that I trained, the harder it was to get off, almost like I was like I was fighting my own body and I did not understand why. I didn't think it was hormonal because I thought I was too young to be having hormone issues because a lot of people don't talk about this, right? So one of the biggest mistakes I made was focusing on those calories in, calories out. Ladies, this is the biggest weight loss lie. And actually, there are zero studies supporting that this is factual. So even doctors that put us on it, dietitians that put us on it, everyone says, well, eat less and move more. It was never designed to work, and this is exactly why. And you ready to let go of like, I, I wasted like half of my life doing this thing and chasing diets? All right, let's get into it. This is why it doesn't work. Because the more you lower your calories, you're actually lowering the amount of calories you're burning. So for example, if you've been eating 2,000 calories a day and you wanna be in that deficit, right? So you lower your calorie intake to 1,500 calories a day. So then you should be in a deficit of at least 500 calories a day, regardless of your exercise and activity level, right? But what actually happens is that your metabolism slows down. So low calorie diets, these super restrictive diets actually slow down your metabolism. So now instead of burning those 2,000 calories a day that you were used to burning, now you're only burning 1,500. So that's why if you do get a result from a low calorie diet or restrictive diet, it's hard to keep it off. So if, let's say you lost 10 pounds eating 1,500 calories a day, and then you go have a burger, or you go on a vacation for a week, that weight comes back so fast. Usually everything you lost and then some. And like, ladies, raise your hand. Who, what is more frustrating than completing a diet program, hitting a goal, or you know, looking and feeling the way you wanna look, and then the second you just go on vacation, you gain it all back. There's, there's nothing more frustrating than putting in the work and then not make, being able to maintain the result. But this is why it was never designed to work for us. It was never designed to work. That's why you have to keep dieting or you have to keep cutting calories or you have to keep trying new different uh, diet programs because the weight's not gonna, it was never designed to stay off. Actually, the diet industry doesn't want you to know this because if you knew, they wouldn't be able to sell you the programs that they sell you. And believe me, you name them, I've tried them. Actually, ladies, at all the diets that you try, let's leave them in the comments, because I'm curious. I, I got some crazy ones, down to like um, this weird juice that you mix with water and you're supposed to lose 10 pounds in two days. Yeah, that didn't go so well. But, so that was the biggest mistake I was making was cutting calories, cutting calories, cutting calories. Mistake number two was I was training too hard. So, you know, we feel like, you know, eat less, move more. So I'm moving more, right? So I'm exercising over an hour a day, six days a week, thinking that I just need to train harder. I was getting older, so my metabolism was getting slower. So I just need to train harder and diet harder. No, I got the opposite effect and I actually gained 20 pounds in a month. That was mind blowing and discouraging and depressing and it felt horrible. Um, and also sent my hormones on this really horrible roller coaster ride. So I was having, I was extremely fatigued, like literally felt like I was walking through quicksand just to get out of bed and get up the energy, muster up the energy to leave the house. I would need coffee and pre-workout just to have the energy to even get out of the house and kind of fake my way through my day. You know, ladies, are you feeling like that? Like that chronic fatigue, you're just tired all the time. It's like you never get enough rest. You, you're in the bed, but you wake up feeling tired. Uh, anxiety was through the roof. I would literally be sitting on the couch and start having an anxiety attack. I, and I, I had never been an anxious person. I just did not know where all of this was coming from. But it was coming from the hormonal imbalances that are going to start fluctuating after we hit the age of 35, kind of start heading to that perimenopause stage. And perimenopause and menopause are not bad words. We'll get into that. But 
I wasn't prepared for that and I thought that the, the dieting hard and the training hard would help and it actually did had opposite effect and caused weight gain and fat gain which took me a long time to get off but I'm going to show you how we're going to get it off. So with exercise there is a tipping point so let's say you're training an hour a day or you want to add two hours. Yes it's meant to relieve stress but then there's this tipping point where it goes from being beneficial to now it's inducing stress. So it's causing more stress in the body, increasing your cortisol levels. Did no workout and training can do that? Yeah, so we wanna keep our workouts an hour or less. Like get in the gym, get your workout done and like get up out of there. Don't, don't be hanging around for two hours. There's no reason for that. And I know there's a lot of people who train for long hours like that. And women at some point, it's, it's gonna backfire. So we wanna cut out the super long workouts. Mistake number three, <clears throat> tried intermittent fasting because it became a weight loss trend one year and did that for six months, didn't lose a pound, felt like crap, could barely have, the, I barely had enough energy to make through, so I could make, make it through my workouts. And I was kinda like, I knew this wasn't gonna work because I'm a breakfast person, you're supposed to have breakfast and that's what increases your metabolism for the day. Yeah, all that's false too. So I tried intermittent fasting. Biggest mistake I made there is that I was fasting the same way every single day. And you're not supposed to do that. You should be varying your fast. There's also women with our, with our hormones, with our testosterone, estrogen, and progesterone, we wanna have days that we're not fasting at all to support our hormones. But I've shifted my views completely on fasting. And I'm gonna get to that because this is what's gonna help us get that body fat off and start feeling good again. I uh, tried intermittent fasting, did it the wrong way. Didn't even pay attention to the foods I was eating going into a fast or coming out of a fast. So it explains why I wasn't having these big bursts of energy that everybody said they were having, experiencing, and I didn't lose any weight, all right? So that's three. Number four, I was eating late. Who else out there, you work late, and then by the time you get settled in the house, it's like, dang, I gotta make dinner. <laughs> so that would be me, because we have coaching calls into the night. We might not finish until nine o'clock at night. Then I'm thinking, oh my gosh, we gotta eat. So we're eating late, which actually, the, the downside to eating late, and this is for my people like late night snackers who eat late at night. What happens is, after the sun goes down, our melatonin levels increase. So our body naturally produces melatonin. If you're taking a melatonin supplement, we wanna stop that. It's gonna affect your natural production of melatonin. So melatonin levels go up, but we also become insulin resistant. Meaning, so all those things that we're taking, the food we're taking in at night are getting stored as body fat. So insulin resistance means when the blood sugar goes up, insulin levels go up, but it's not able to, insulin's not able to get the sugar into the cells to be used as energy, so it does get stored. So the inner excess energy gets stored as body fat. Something as simple as shifting the time that you're eating to eat while it's daylight, cut your meals off by maybe like 6 p.m. Actually, it depends on where you live. The sun's out till seven, eight o'clock, you're probably good, but eat while it's daylight. So if you have that cut off, now you're able to give your body a chance to burn what you consume and you have that time for your insulin levels to come down, glucose levels to come down for you to get in this fat burning state that we're gonna talk about getting into fasting because that's gonna target that belly fat. And number five was not really paying attention to the toxins that we were taking in and in the form of processed food. So we want to eliminate that toxic, excess toxins that we're placing on our body. So if we're eating refined sugars, refined flours, uh, man-made foods, packaged goods, we want to avoid those because they're placing a toxic load on our body and it's affecting our hormone levels, it's raising our blood sugar levels, and it's making it hard to lose body fat. So what we want to do to turn this whole thing around, one, we want to ditch the calorie counting. Two, we want to incorporate fasting. Start with like a 13 hour fast, maybe a 15 hour fast, but make sure you have some variety in your fast. You don't want to fast the same way every single day. Three, you want to really focus on what are you eating going into a fast and coming out of a fast. So now we said we're gonna pull out those processed foods, right? We're pulling out those toxins, we're pulling out those refined sugars and refined flours, our breads, cookies, pastas, things like that. And we're focusing on getting our healthy fats, our avocado, olive oil, our nuts, nut butters, 
um, ghee, beef tallow, getting our proteins, our meats, our chicken, our fish, and getting lots of dark leafy greens, those nutrient dense fruits and vegetables. That's going to give your body the nutrients it needs to go into a fast successfully and also the benefit to eating those healthy fats. It turns out that hunger hormone in the brain. That's like the best thing ever. So if you struggle with hunger and cravings, you're probably not getting enough healthy fats. So these are things we're doing to completely turn this thing around. We've just, we've been programmed, the diet industry programmed us to believe that this calories in, calories out thing was the exact foundation of weight loss. It's gonna be our end all, be all. This is how you control and maintain your weight. And no, that's a big old lie. So ladies, what crazy diets have you tried before? Let me know in the comments. I'm gonna dive more into the things I changed to lose over 40 pounds over the age of 40. And it was really just a lot of these simple shifts. So I'll see you in the next video.